This video is sponsored by GamersGalaxy.shop, your one-stop shop for all things gaming accessories. Whether it be dice, sleeves, deck boxes, binders and more, Gamers Galaxy has all your accessory type needs. They even have a weekly deal section where each week they offer a blanket percentage off a specific product for an entire week. They accept a myriad of payment options as well as give you free shipping on orders of $75 or more. Use promo code yugibro 5 exclamation point for 5% off any of your purchases when shopping with them. That's GamersGalaxy.shop What's up guys, it's Yugi Bros and today we are doing a the first dual video under both the YCS Niagara list and the errated skills that were revealed as of yesterday as of recording this video anyways. Uh, so today we are actually showcasing uh, XYZs with Union Combination with the errata. Now, they haven't been updated in uh, Dueling Book as of yet. However, the errata to uh, Combination, to essentially Fusion Summon with it, now you have to send a card from your hand to the bottom of your deck to use its effects as opposed to being able to just freely do it before. You're also locked into only fusing things that cannot be fusion summoned, but that doesn't change anything in the case of XYZ. All the XYZ fusions cannot be fusion summoned, so that's the same. Uh, we're actually playing Relinquished because we felt like Relinquished was uh, good enough under the new list anyways, so that most things don't affect it. Uh, I'll show you guys more when it comes to the uh, deck profile at the end of the video. Uh, but they're going to start out with a Floodgate and a Z-Metal Tank, and we are going, we draw into uh, Sphere, Black Illusion, Breaker, and Illusionist Faceless. And so we are drawing for turn, we won the dice roll, so we elected to go second, since Relinquish still has a terrible going first game. They're going to Floodgate here, we're going to simply pass, they're going to draw into another X-Head Cannon, flip the Z-Metal Tank, swing the Z into our defense, and swing in for 1800, we will gladly accept. We draw into Relinquished, so we're going to activate Black Illusion here, sending Faceless for Relinquished, having Relinquished's effect use it on the XYZ. In theory, we could have actually speared the last attack, but we didn't know we were going to top deck Relinquished. If we did, we probably would have, that way you keep the Faceless uh, in the hand so the pe player doesn't know that we have it. But it is what it is. So they're going to summon X-Head Cannon here, set the Book of Moon, they're actually not going to swing in. Uh, they're just gonna pass here because it makes sense if they were to book this and swing and then they we had a sphere Karibo, they'd lose hard out for that. So you might as well just keep the 18 versus the 18 and have them make the move. Uh, we draw into perfectly ultimate great moth, which does nothing in this situation. We are still on the cocoon variant, and I'll show you again if you remember the video how it works. Uh, but they're going to then book of moon here. Now that they have another monster to have, they're gonna have Z swing over here. We'll let that die. We get Faceless's effect. Um, we're gonna put it in attack mode to try to bait them. Obviously, they're not going to fall for that, so they will pass. We draw into a second Sphere Karibo. We're fine, we can just chill. We can go as long as possible. The downside to XYZ now, if they wanna fuse, is they'll have to send a card in their hand back to their deck. So it makes both the discard from XYZ a lot uh, weaker. Uh, because they'll lose a card in their hand and also just anything they top deck uh, Potentially won't matter depending on what they already have in hand. We're gonna normal into breaker here We're gonna swing over X uh, for 100 damage and pass They draw into future fusion. Now this is an interesting addition to the deck now that foolish burial is at one uh, And uh, Union hanger is at two. This is another way to kind of get your pieces to the graveyard it doesn't do anything on the turn it's activated, but in the second standby phase, they'll reveal the fusion monster they want and send the materials from the deck to the grave for it. And then on the second standby phase, they'll summon it. Now they're going to use Union Combination here. Uh, Dueling Book actually, for the speed duel matches specifically, doesn't have a send to bottom of the deck. So we were agreeing to just uh, throw it in the top of the deck and then shuffle the deck later on. Uh, they're going to banish Z and X since they haven't hit the Y yet. Summoning XZ and having XZ swing here over the breaker. We're going to sphere that since we have no reason not to now with two spheres in hand. If we top deck relinquished, which we do in fact do. So uh, we're going to Black Illusion here, sending the Illusionist Faceless, summoning the relinquished, and then this Faceless will trigger summoning the other relinquished from the graveyard. Both of them are going to use their effects to take control of the monsters our opponent controls. And if we do a little uh, dueling book dancing here, and then we're gonna have Breaker pop the future fusion because why not? This is a game. Might as well just pop it just for an incentive if somehow they stopped us or we're playing a Sphere Karibo in the main deck, but it doesn't matter. That's gonna be game one for us. 
So going into the side deck and going into game two, we're gonna start out with pre-prep. They make us go first, and everyone knows we're like just notorious for only using that in passing. <laughs> They were going to set a Z metal tank here. Uh, they're then going to set the last one in pass. We're going to draw into a faceless magician. Normal summon out our breaker. Have our breaker effect pop their face down, which is lost wind. It's really good against Relinquish, but not in this situation. Relinquish will then take their defense and we will get in there for 1600, trying to put the offensive into the game immediately. Alternatively, we didn't have to go in for the Relinquish play, but we figured if it was why Dragonhead Breaker wouldn't be able to swing over it. We draw one copy of Zoma the Spirit. The only thing we play on the Limit Ones list, obviously, is Zoma. We don't play the other cards. Uh, so we just have Zoma as an extra tech. They draw into a Y Dragon Hit. They will set that and set you Scramble and Pass. End phase, we're gonna flip Zoma. We almost forgot to do that there. Uh, we're going to then Tribute the Relinquished with the Z Metal Tank for a Faceless Magician. We're gonna go into battle phase, have Zoma swing over their monster, have Breaker get in for 16, and have, try to have Faceless swing in for game, in which he actually does. The Union Scrambles were not enough, obviously. And this deck is a lot slower, like I've been saying already. It's a lot slower because you 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 can't use your discards. Or I'm sorry, it would be your bottoms, essentially, your discards, your extra free cards to fuse as easily. You can't just use easy uh, extra cards in the deck as easy as you used to be able to uh, because of the change to the uh, skill. Uh, we draw an Azoma and Lost Wind, and we will simply pass on that. They're going to activate Hanger here. Hanger getting the Y Dragon Head. They're going to then normal summon the Y Dragon Head and have Hanger equipped it with a Z Metal Tank. Hanger to two is interesting because while I don't think it really does a whole lot, I think Scramble should have been the hit. Between that and now the errata to the skill, the deck's consistency is a lot less. It's very, very low compared to what it used to be. I was more convinced that the skill was still going to be fine. Uh, but the deck would just be knocked down a peg, but no, I actually think the deck got knocked down a few pegs here. So in phase, we're going to Zoma, then we're going to normal summon the Breaker, and we're actually going to pop Z Metal Tank here, because both of these will swing over, and we're trying to just get in for as enough damage as possible. So we're going to swing in for 100 there, we're going to swing in for 18 there. Uh, we have Lost Wind if they do indeed summon the XYZ, so we're not super worried as to right now. If they have a back row, this will probably be Book of Moon, and we'll probably bait it with one of these two. So we figure there's no real reason to hit that. We might as well just swing over the monster. They're going to use their one copy of Foolish Burial on the last piece. They're then going to use the skill, bottom a card, banish all three pieces, and summon XYZ Dragon Cannon. They got that out. Uh, they're going to use the effect, discarding Z, to try to pop their Zoma, but we have the Lost Wind for it. And they'll set the Floodgate, and unfortunately have to pass on that. So, as you can see, XYZ is taking a big hit. Like, I also think Relinquished is just fairly well placed between the YCS Niagara list and the Erratas. The Erratas don't really have any effect on this deck. Um, I'm sorry, the list doesn't really have an effect on this deck, and the Erratas have no effect on this deck unless you're playing a, a specific card with an Errata. But we're not, so we're just playing around what we can do. Uh, we start out with pre prep there, for example. We get the pieces. We're going to shuffle in with the equip. I'm sorry, with the cocoon. We're going to then summon out relinquish. They're going to floodgate that. So unfortunately, we're just going to have to pass. We uh, we can't get over the XYZ uh, with our Zoma, but that's fine. We're in a really good position right now. They're going to flip XYZ, discard the card they drew to pop the Zoma. Uh, but they know it's relinquished. They know it's relinquished, but they figure instead of chancing to attack it while we have, if we had like a Sphere Turbo or a Faceless Magician in hand, the card is floodgated, it's not getting flipped anytime soon, so they don't have to worry about uh, attacking it. However, we draw into the Paranoid that <laughs> we just shuffled in for our Moth, and of course that is game. So I did a 3 out of 5 instead of 2 out of 3, just to showcase more games. Uh, but Relinquish has a huge leg up right now, I think in the format in general. I think it'll be Cyber Angel, that, and a few other options. Uh, unfortunately, I think XYZ might just be cooked. But uh, let's go to the deck list. So for Relinquish, we are playing three copies of good old Relinquish. We are playing the one Moth now because we only have one Paranoid due to the list. One, three Faceless Magician, three Break of the Magical Warrior, three Sphere Karibo, three Pre Prep, three Black Illusion Ritual. One double cyclone and one zoma. If we reference the new list uh, for a second, let's drag these over a little bit just so you guys can see. 
uh, and we take into account uh, what has really changed. Uh, we weren't ever playing Jinzo unless we were playing Shadow Reborn. Uh, we weren't playing Rota, we weren't playing Zone of the Spirit, we weren't playing Foolish unless again we were playing Shadow Reborn, but we'll have to pick and choose when we get to that variant. So none of these affect us, so we might as well just play a Zoma in the main deck. We could alternatively side at Jinzo, but I feel like this list has less access to Jinzo than other lists would, so we're just going to play the Zoma and call it a day. Zoma is still at 1 is an extremely powerful card if played at the right time, so we see no reason not to play that. Cocoon and Parasite, if you're playing those at 2, then you're playing 1 and 1 and that's it. You're not playing these 3 cards. But we're not playing Hanger, we're not playing Allure, and we're not playing Nightmare Wheel. Uh, we could have sided Wheel, I guess, but just not in this variant. And we can get it wrong with playing 1 and 1 of these and not really care. Like, the deck is Relinquished centric. If you draw this, it's just your power, your extra power play you didn't have before. But you don't really need to play multiples. It's just if you have it, you have it. And if, like I said, you draw, you dead draw this, you can send it for the tribute for Black Illusion and then shuffle it back into the deck and draw a card with your skill. So, still a really good card just to have in general. And in the limit three section, we were always playing three Break of the Magical Warrior. We were never playing DD Warrior Lady. If we were, we can't now. We weren't playing Book of Moon in this deck. We sometimes sided it, but we were not maining it because flipping something face down and then taking it kind of leaves you with um, this zero attack, uh, zero defense equip. That's kind of just not all that great. We have better cards for that, such as Memory Loss and Lost Win, which I'll get into in a second. Uh, Cosmic, we weren't playing. We could have, but we have Double Cyclone instead to run that. And Metaverse, finally, we weren't playing as well. So. What's nice too is it's something like memory loss, which if an effect of an attack decision monster is activated, it negates the effect and changes it to face up defense, is kind of nice uh, because then you can, uh, whatever your take then take with the relinquished, it's face up so you'll still get its stats, which is the important part. Same goes for lost win depending on the situation of course. Uh, so I, I think those are just better in general in this deck than Book of Moon ever was. Book of Moon obviously has its uh, relevancy, and if you flip like Relinquish face down with it, you could flip Relinquish back face up with it. That's always the thing. But Double Cyclone's really good in the main. Uh, I think as a one of, it's just a really good way to blast a back row if you need to kind of make a quick access, but it also can pop whatever you equip with Relinquish, which is nice. Which is why we saw the second copy. We would main two, but we already have enough spell and trap eight in the form of breaker. And Zoma too good, man. Zoma just straight too good. Plus these are easy side deck out cards along with maybe a faceless magician or a sphere depending on how you're playing the deck. Or a breaker, depending again. Uh, the side deck we play Lava Golem because it's still a really, really dumb kaiju in this game. And we can also then take it and have a 3000 beat stick. Soul Exchange because we can use this uh, when we're using Black Illusion Ritual depending on where we are at. The second double cyclone, mind crush, because this is still one of the most powerful side deck cards in the game. My memory loss, as I just explained, and lost wind as well. We could play Waking the Dragon. I always opt to play a six card side deck for no other reason than if we do have Waking the Dragon, you might as well have some options for it. But again, uh, don't really have the space for it, would rather consistency. The side deck right now is completely uh, blank. It, it's based on whatever you're, you think you're gonna see the most. It's based on a lot of things. So th this is all like take it or leave it. Uh, but this is the main deck, and I, I honestly think Relinquished is very well positioned as of right now. Alternatively, with XYZ, we played a very interesting list. I'm not saying this is the way an optimal way to play it going into the future, but because of the limits, uh, the semi limits to Union Hanger and the fact that we now have to sacrifice a card in our hand to fusion summon. Something like Offerings to the Doomed is just too much of a minus now, with the sense that you'd have to skip your draw phase. You need every draw you can get in this deck, which is probably a good argument for why Metaverse might actually see more play in here, but you know, we'll, we'll take that as we uh, go over time. We were playing Triple X, Triple Y, and Triple Z just to see the consistency. One Foolish Burial and a Future Fusion as our quote unquote second Foolish Burial. Uh, two Union Hanger, two Book of Moon because we side a Warrior Lady, so that rounds out those three. Triple Union Scramble, this is still the heart and soul of the deck considering it's the only thing that didn't get touched in the deck. And it is quote unquote the recovery the deck has. You of course just have to be able to fuse to get this thing to go off. And then finally two copies of Floodgate Trap Hole. Uh, Book of Moon and DD Warrior Lady share the same spotlight in the Limit 3 section now, so you can alternatively, if you want to play more copies of Warrior Lady or Cosmic Cyclone, cut this completely and play Full of Gate. But I think this card is still too good with YZ Tank Dragon, just to be able to automatically flip something face down and then destroy it. Uh, the side deck, once again, is very random. It's one DD, one Sphere, one Night Beam, one Rare Metal Morph, which I think might be more relevant now. 
Um, it prevents, it negates the first spell that targets uh, your machine. It also gives your machine 500 attack, which is a little extra, but Mind Crush, like I said, still best card, and Lost Wind wouldn't leave home without it. Uh, along with 2XYZ, 2YZ, 1XZ, and 1XY. So, what do you guys think? Uh, leave your comments down below as to how you think these decks fare in the format going forward. And this, of course, is with the YCS Niagara list, as well as the erratas that currently go into effect as of yesterday. Uh, let me know down below what you guys think. I'm Yugi Bros, and I'm out.